Hi everyone and welcome to this new tutorial from Kintools. Today we're going to talk about the newly updated face builder for Blender, which lets you create photorealistic 3D portraits using only photos or images. 3D heads made with face builder are used for many purposes, like tracking heads in live action shots using Geo Tracker, which lets you easily add CG elements and visual effects, creating look-alike game-ready 3D characters through the integration with Character Creator 4, turning someone into a metahuman in Unreal Engine, and so on. So it's a very powerful tool with flexible pricing for VFX studios and CG enthusiasts with a 15-day free trial. Before we move on to making custom 3D heads, let's briefly see how to install the add-on. Download Kintools Blender Pack from Kintools.io, open Blender, go to Edit, Preferences, click Install, navigate to the downloaded zip package. If you're a Mac user, double-click on the DMG and find the zip file inside. Select that zip file, click Install Add-on from File, then activate the add-on, accept license agreement and finally hit Install Online, which will download Kintools Core Library and install it to your computer. Now we have Face Builder inside of Blender. You can launch it from the N panel, so click on this tiny icon over here, or just press N, and then click on the Face Builder tab. Then press Create New Head. This will add a default 3D head to the scene, and that's the one we'll be morphing using some reference images. For a quick start, let's build a 3D head using just one image. So go ahead and click on this big Add Images button and load a reference image. Let's use something common, like a profile picture as an example. Once loaded, it appears as one of the views on the Face Builder panel over here. When you click on it, you'll see the head as a 3D mesh on top of the image. And unless you have multiple people in the frame, Face Builder will automatically detect the face and make a rough estimation of its shape. If there's more than one face in the image, you'll need to click the Auto Align button first and select the one you want to turn into 3D. We can now zoom in and use these red points on the mesh to move and stretch it in order to align it with the face more accurately. We call them pins and you can delete them with a right click and create new by left clicking anywhere on the mesh. These are just reference points and by dragging them to their corresponding positions on the image we're actually sculpting our 3D head. If there's a smile on the face or an open mouth, raised eyebrows or closed eyes, in other words, the facial expression isn't neutral, check Allow Facial Expressions over here in the Views tab to make these blue parts of the mesh more flexible, so that when you pull them, they don't affect the rest of the head that much. Now that it's on, we can align these lips quite easily. We can adjust mesh color if it's too bright or fades with the image, just go to the Appearance tab and try some other color scheme or change the opacity. So, after a couple of more mesh adjustments, we can go straight to the Texture tab and click on Create Texture. Face Build is now going to grab the texture from the image and bake it onto our 3D head. If we go to Camera View now, we'll see our textured model on top of the image. This is still a bit of a mismatch, and that's because the resulting 3D head has a neutral expression. We can go over here to the Model tab and change it to an expression from a certain view. This is how we can apply expressions from different views to our 3D model. Let's press Z and switch shading to solid. This is our single image to 3D result, a head that we've sculpted using just one photo. Let's now create a 3D head from multiple views and see how far we can go with its likeness and shape accuracy. So without quitting this project, let's click on create new head and then add images and load more pictures of the same person. To make a very accurate digital copy of a head, we recommend using a set of photos showing it from different views. The most important ones are full face, both three-quarter views, left and right profile, and also half face backside, left and right. We'll also use the low and high angle views, and additionally a back view to have texture source for that part of the model. Once they're loaded, let's go to the front view. What we're going to do is align mesh to face in each view. The order we suggest sticking to is doing the front first, then three quarters, then side views, and then all others. And we're going to do it roughly in this round. Let's press the auto align button and let Face Builder detect the face and put the mesh automatically on it. Now we're going to slightly adjust the facial features that are off. Press Tab to turn the mesh on and off to see if the part of the mesh you're adjusting matches with the corresponding part of the face. It's also important to delete irrelevant pins. Just right-click on them, and of course you can create new pins if you need to stretch or squeeze some part of the mesh. But don't try to match everything perfectly in this single view. Keep only those pins whose position you're sure of, like on the eyes, ears, nose wings, and mouth corners. Let's go to the next view and basically do the same thing. Auto-align mesh first, make some rough adjustments, and delete the pins whose position is not immediately apparent. Keep only the ones you're sure of. Again, don't try to make everything perfect right now. 
The less pins you set at this stage, the better. Don't be afraid to delete them. You can always go back with the undo. Let's go through the other views now, adjusting the mesh shape exactly the same way. When it comes to views like this, FaceBuilder AI may say that it can't auto-align the mesh because there's not enough facial features to detect. In that case, you'll need to put it on manually. You can rotate the mesh with these buttons over here. Each click gives you a 45 degree rotation, either left or right, to get closer to the needed angle. You can now set pins on the most prominent parts of the mesh and one by one match them with the image. The first three pins set the mesh orientation in 3D, and as you set the fourth pin, you already start morphing your 3D head. Alright, you see there's a pin icon on each view button, which means there's at least one pin on the mesh in each view. You can go to the model tab and turn different parts of the model on and off. Let's say we don't need the neck base. The guy has a t-shirt on, we may not want to have it in our texture, so let's just get rid of that. We're done with the rough alignment, let's do a second round to shape our mesh more precisely. You don't necessarily need to start with the full face this time. You can go back to 3 quarters, which gives us more information about the 3D shape. As you see, some of the pens are not quite where they used to be. That's okay, when we drag a pen in one of the views, the mesh gets automatically adjusted in other views. What we're gonna do now is adjust the things that are off and specify the shape of all the important parts like the eyes, nose, chin, cheekbones, lips, forehead and neck. We need to do that in all the views again. Don't be afraid to delete and create new pens if you think some part of the mesh doesn't quite match with the face. Remember that it's just a tool that we use to morph our 3D model. So switch between the different views, make tiny adjustments here and there, check how that affects the mesh in other views. As you work your mesh, you may notice that some of its parts may be more resistant to dragging than others, and some pins appear really far off, and the blue dotted lines that we call residuals grow pretty long. It doesn't mean you are doing anything wrong, it's just an indication that the tension in this part of the mesh is becoming higher. In most cases it's okay, because we're going further and further away from the face builder default head, but long residuals may also be the result of some other pins pulling the mesh in the opposite direction. Now, every head is different and you may get a very accurate result already at this stage, but in case of complicated faces and heads like the one we have here, it's worth passing it one more time to fine-tune the mesh in areas that contain tiny curvatures or bumps that mean a lot for the uniqueness of the face you are sculpting. Alright, let's go back to 3D. Here are the two heads we've made and apparently the second one is a lot more detailed and accurate, which makes sense because we used images showing it from so many different angles. Let's go texture it. You can change your texture settings if you need by clicking this gear icon. Over here you can select the source views for your texture, change the output size, etc. For now we'll just press create texture, wait for a second and here we are. A nicely textured 3D head with a very accurate geometry. You can export, animate it, 3D print or make it into a 3D character or avatar. So that's how you can create custom 3D heads from photos using Face Builder for Blender. Most of the alignment job is done automatically with the built-in AI tool. Manual adjustment doesn't require any special 3D modeling skills. The workflow is intuitive and fun. One-click texturing lets you easily create photorealistic 3D portraits. Download Face Builder for Blender from Kintools.io. Have fun creating 3D heads. There's a 15-day free trial for all new users. I hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell to stay informed about our new products, tutorials and live streams. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.